if you feel like you're not getting the maximum out of your day, if you feel like you're getting tired in the afternoon, if you feel like you have that constant fatigue, that you feel like you need to, to drink more coffee or take a nap to recover, this video is for you. This is my blueprint to maintaining and achieving consistent high levels through the day. There are only three variables when it comes to your energy levels. Okay, those main three variables contribute to your energy and they either are they are a reflection of either you feeling tired or you feeling super energetic. And this is what we're going to cover in this video, okay? So let me dive straight into it starting with the most important variables, variable number 1. And by the way, like this is self-explanatory, right? So the battery here is your a reflection of your energy levels. And that battery is controlled by those main three variables, which we're we going to discuss right now. Starting with number one, this is the most important thing, okay? This is the most important variable that fills 33% of your energy, of your battery, okay? So what is the circadian rhythm? The circadian rhythm is the ability of your body to produce specific hormones and chemicals at the right times of the day. Okay, it is the, uh, the ability of your body to have energy when you wake up and feel, feel sleepy before you go to bed and do the right things at the right time. So I'm going to like, this is kind of wordy, so I'm going to dive in more details right now. So what you need to do is to optimize each one of those three variables in order to optimize your energy levels and therefore have high energy throughout the whole day, which as an entrepreneur is going to reflect in, in like better outputs in the business. Okay, because if you if it goes around like 2 3 p.m., you feel tired, you have the afternoon slump, and you don't seem to get out of it, and the only way to get out of it is to either take a nap or drink coffee, etc., that is stopping you and slowing you down from your competition, which are, they are more optimized and they're getting more stuff done in the day. So let's kind of see how do we optimize the circadian rhythm. So, <clears throat> how do you optimize the circadian rhythm? First thing is consistent sleep schedule, okay? Uh, when you do that, every, every chemical process in your body sinks, okay, calibrates, and therefore your body is able to predict and anticipate the time that you wake up so that it can produce the, the right chemicals at the right times. And sleeping and waking up, there are dozens of things you can do or like four main things that I've noted down here. But like the reason I have consistent sleep schedule at number one is because that's the lowest hanging fruit. That's the like most impactful way in which you can optimize your skin rhythm. Uh, I mean, you can like have this at the end here, but if that's not set, then you're never going to have like your, your skin rhythm is never going to function properly. And as a result, like most people do that, you might be you may be doing this yourself as well, especially in the normal weekdays and the weekends we have the tendency of oversleeping or undersleeping in the weekends and like waking up at like seven, six on the weekdays. And then because it's the weekend, you maybe not wor be working, your team is off. You're taking a more, more chill a couple of days, then you might wake up at 10 and sleep at two or something like that, which throws your circadian rhythm out of whack, which as a result, you wake up, you, Monday comes around the corner and you're tired and it takes you until Wednesday to fill at your peak again. Not optimal. So the main thing here is consistent sleep schedule. That's the most important thing when it comes to sleep. So you wake, like if you go to bed at like nine and wake up at six or whatever, just keep that. Like approximately within one hour, give or take difference is not the end of the world, but that's the most impactful thing, the impactful habit you can, uh, you can stick to in your daily life to optimize your circadian rhythm, which is gonna result in higher levels of energy, okay? Next thing on the list is enough REM or deep sleep, okay? I have like this software that I track for my clients as well. It's the O-ring, I use it myself. And as you see here, these are some metrics of one of my clients, okay? Now all of my clients are entrepreneurs or business owners and we optimize their sleep in order for them to have high levels of focus, high levels of energy, where is this, the point of this video today, and also perform at their absolute peak. One of the main things we focus when it comes to sleep is the REM sleep, okay? And you can see here, we optimize in order for them to get more than two hours of REM sleep per night, which is, which is really exceptional. So REM sleep 
it, optimal REM and deep sleep is what's going to achieve. It's going to achieve you waking up feeling refreshed, recovered, and, and, and ready to attack the day. The properties, the responsibilities of REM and deep sleep are the following. Deep sleep acts as a physical recovery factor. So anything that happens on the inside, whether that's going to be recovery of your joints, of your muscle, your recovery from the gym, from your workouts, even some, even cleansing of the lymphatic system, which is the, the sewage system of your body, that's, that happens in deep sleep, okay? But mainly whatever has to do with your physical recovery, it's covered on, in deep sleep. So if you're training, if you're a high performer as well and you're exercising and you want to have good recovery and also good immune function, because deep sleep is also responsible for cleansing extra and excess cortisol levels from your bloodstream, okay? And cortisol, we know that for a fact, is deadly for your cardiovascular system and stress levels and mental performance in the long game. That is taken care of in deep sleep. REM sleep is more so for the mental aspect of things, but also cleanses the lymphatic system, which is in the brain, the sewage system that toxins and chemicals build up from the rest of the day. REM sleep is the part of the sleep, the part of sleep that get, gets rid of that. But also it's more important for testosterone production, for focus and cognitive behavior for, for the rest of the day, and also, and also emotional balance. Okay? So that's why you need to optimize for REM and deep sleep as well. You need to get enough how much is enough? Well, those stats here are pretty dialed in. For the most part, you should be aiming to get two hour, above two hours in both metrics, okay? So as you can see here, above two hours of REM sleep, that's something really exceptional. Most males have get more deep sleep than REM sleep. And this male client here gets one and a half hours to one, and a half, one hour, 40 minutes of REM sleep, of deep sleep, sorry. And that's something um, out of the ordinary, but usually above two hours in each is something really, really good to strive for. In the beginning for the, with this client, just to show you, show you some context, he, that was like what his sleep was looking like. His deep sleep was a big bottleneck and REM sleep as well. What the, the issue with him was deep sleep. And we got that like we tenfolded that. Okay, so that's... That's what REM sleep and deep sleep means. Next thing on the list is optimal light viewing behaviors. So you do the things that calibrate your circadian rhythm, which is exposing your eyes to sunlight within the first 30 minutes of waking up and not exposing your eyes to bright overhead lights at least the last three hours of the day. And instead, what you do is you focus on lighting your environment with dim firelight colors below eye level. Let me show you just for context. Let me show. I'm gonna open my phone here, and I'll show you how my uh, environment, how my house looks like after seven. Which I go to bed at ten. So at seven, I start dimming the lights. Start like I prioritize optimizing my circadian rhythm. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, firelight colors. Everything is below eye level on the countertops. Uh, next to my TV, etc. Right? So that's what it should look like for optimal light viewing behaviors. Morning is pretty easy. You just want to get outside, not inside. This light above my head right now is not nearer, not nowhere as near as light as you would not want it to be in the morning. So yeah, just sunlight. Keep it simple. The next thing is optimal eating behaviors. Every process of your body including digestion, uh, they have a circadian component to them. So when you eat your first and last bite of the day, sets in motion a dozen cascades of chemical processes as a result. So if you have an inconsistent eating schedule, that is going to like confuse your circadian rhythm, okay? Which as we know now, eating is a strong component, it is a strong variable, or uh, and it's Fitting windows is a strong component of your skin rhythm. Uh, it affects your recovery, it affects your sleep, it affects your... Uh, the, the body's ability to detox, okay? So the best thing to do is to keep your first meal of the day and last meal of the day consistent. You can transition in the, mid, in the middle, it doesn't really play a big role, but the first bite and last bite of the day is something to keep a real close eye on. 
we covered circadian rhythm and the variables behind it. Now the next thing is blood sugar. Okay, the next most important thing to keep in mind for when we're whenever we're considering high energy levels through the day, which is something many many people struggle with, blood sugar is something neglected a lot. So here's how to optimize blood sugar. What when I'm saying optimize blood sugar, what you need to like keep in your mind is that you want to maintain stable energy, stable blood sugar levels throughout the whole day. Okay, you don't want dip. You don't want like big dips. Dips sometimes equal to high levels of focus and being like alert, but you don't want very big highs and very big lows. You don't want that. So some things you can incorporate that will in, uh, improve your ability to regulate your blood sugar is incorporating time restricted eating, which is fasting. Uh, improving fa incorporating fasting in your daily life is actually shown to have an impact on your body's um, regulation of blood sugar, but by simply helping your body utilize blood sugar better to the right parts of the body, to the right organs, to the right systems, okay? Whereas if you're always like eating and blood sugar is constantly elevated in your system, your body is, and this is what causes insulin resistance. Your your body is essentially f forgets how to utilize uh, blood sugar, and with time restricted eating, you're improving your body's ability to get rid of excess blood sugar in the in the in the system. Okay, so something like 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of feeding window. I personally do around. 18 hours to 19 hours of fasting, sometimes even 22 hours of fasting, depending on how busy I am. But I make sure to keep the last meal of the day stable because I try not to eat uh, like around six hours before bed to ensure that my circadian rhythm is very strong and my recovery is optimal. So the next best thing to do is exercising daily and lifting weights. Uh, now. When you, especially when you work in the morning and you're fasted, what's going to happen is your glycogen stores are going to be depleted. So after you have, even if you have like some carbs in your meal, what's going to happen is that the muscles, because they're, they're like craving for sugar, they're craving for glucose, they're going to suck all of it. And therefore it, it's not going to impact your blood sugar that much. So exercising daily, that, that's not the main reason why you want to exercise, but that's a fun fact. The main reason you want to exercise daily is because it helps your body utilize glucose as an energy fuel and not leaving it in the blood. The main people, the main problem with blood sugar is that it, if it stays elevated in your bloodstream for long, that's deadly to your cells. It damages your cells. And also it's terrible for your longevity, let alone energy levels. Okay. So lifting weights, Doing cardio on non-lifting days, that's what I do. That's what I practice with my clients. It's awesome for regulating blood sugar. Next thing that helps you regulate blood sugar when you're eating is eating your fibrous vegetables before you eat the rest of your meal. So instead of starting with your carbs, with your proteins, and then salad, I would have my salad here. Uh, like, I was eating salad. I could show you the salad, but it's like just some, some uh, leftovers. But anyways... You want to eat your fibrous vegetables before you eat your protein and carbs. That's going to help uh, prolong it. The not not prolong it, but it's, it's going to help lower and it's going to help. It's going to have a slower and more steady release of blood sugar in your system, and therefore your body is going to be absorbed better and more effectively. Uh, next thing we want to do is incorporate post meal walks. This is a tool that simply uh, improves your body's ability to absorb blood sugar from the bloodstream again. So you eat your meal, especially lunch, um, and you go for a 10 minute walk outside and you kill many, many birds with one stone because you're exposing your eyes to more sunlight. You're taking an outdoor walk, which is great for your brain function. And also you get more, more activity, more steps in, which is great for your physical health. Okay. That helps you also maintain your energy levels after a meal, because the main problem people have is that they come back from a meal, they stop eating their meal, they keep, keep working and they're like half dead, half, like half asleep, half awake. Okay. You don't want to do that. 
So a fix is incorporating a 10 minute walk, not more, 10 minute walk outside after you're done eating. Next tool is eating the majority of your carbs in dinner. This is one tool I incorporate as well. Whenever I'm having breakfast, I just eat fats and proteins. The reason is that fats and proteins are more difficult. Proteins can do that to some extent, but it's way more difficult to spike your blood sugar with fats and proteins rather than carbs. So carbs, you can spike your blood sugar with carbs and that is gonna result in you feeling kind of lethargic and groggy. You don't want to have that in the morning. Also, carbs and the most complex carbs are high in an amino acid called L-tryptophan, which is the precursor of serotonin. And this carb is, this amino acid is known to make you feel sleepy and make you feel like kind of relaxed. When you want to be working in the morning, what you want to be, in, instead of L-tryptophan, what you want to taking, what you want to be taking is an amino acid called L-tyrosine which is an amino acid that is the precursor of dopamine and adrenaline that makes you feel more alert, aggressive, and triggered, which is essentially how you should be when you're trying to complete very focused work. So that's why I prioritize mainly fats and proteins in the, main me in the first meal of the day. And then for the latest meals of the day, for dinner, for example, that's when I have all of my carbs because I like at dinner, I don't really care being very productive afterwards right? You're already approaching the sleep time. So you want to be winding down naturally. Um, so keeping that bl blood sugar raised for the evening is a better uh, option than having your blood sugar spike in late, earlier in the day. So the next thing is eating based on your skin and clock and avoiding late, late meals. This comes back to the circadian rhythm, okay? Now, optimal feeding behaviors is, as I said before, you need to be, if you're eating based on your circadian clock, you know that your body anticipates breakfast at the time that you're eating breakfast usually. So if I eat my first meal at 10 and my last meal at like four or five, uh, my body will naturally start anticipating that timing after a while. So you will find that if you do that, you can do an experiment. You can try that timing for like a week and after the next day, for example, you like it go. The time is ten. You're, you'll start salivating because your body is is um, accustomed to that specific timing, and your digestive system is start work start is prepared to work at those times. So whenever you are eating within that schedule, the digestive process is more effective, which uh, your your food gets digested better, and therefore your blood sugar gets minimized your blood sugar spikes are not that, that uh, significant. Also, you can see here, avoiding late meals, okay? It's right here. So, a good thing in mind, and this is why I say eating based on your circadian clock. The circadian clock is your body's ability to produce things like cortisol and melatonin that make you feel awake and sleepy. So, melatonin is usually produced like at night. Melatonin window starts at the time that you should be winding down and preparing for bed. If you go ahead and eat a meal like most people do, right before you go to bed, this is your melatonin production will have started and you will start feeling sleepy, but also like just because you're using, you eat some snacks before you go to meal, before you go to bed, like maybe some yogurt with chocolate, like a normal person would, right? Not an entrepreneur, not an, like real optimized dialed in guy. Anyways, if you go ahead and do that, when, you're, when your melatonin is high, this is makes your the absorption of blood sugar in the bloodstream very, very weaker, okay? It's uh, very ineffective. So that has, as a result, many health complications in the long term and diabetes, ob uh, obesity, etc. So that's a big reason you don't want to be eating close to your melatonin window, and this is what eating based on your skin clock really means. And also eating more low GI food, which is the glycemic index. A really cool thing you can do next time you're gonna, like if you're gonna assemble your meals, and if you don't have us do that, which is something I incorporate in my coaching program, but what you wanna do is glycemic index uh, chart. And here you have like a chart. I mean, that's the first thing I found uh, in front of me, so I'm gonna use that. You wanna incorporate more low glycemic index foods, okay? 
So the high glycemic index are gonna have a bigger impact on your blood sugar, but the low are not gonna have that much. So for example, uh, things like berries, blueberries, uh, strawberries, they're like relatively low glycemic index. So if you're having for breakfast, as I mentioned here, you should be looking to have like low carbs, no carbs in breakfast. But if you have something like blueberries or blackberries or strawberries, they're super low GI, which is especially if you're if you're incorporating the exercising daily, like especially in the morning. If you come back from a workout and have like a ton of berries, it's not going to have an impact on your blood sugar, which and also has a ton of polyphenols, which is a really good anti-inflammatory uh, ingredient. So instead of high GI foods, eat more low GI foods and you're going to have more energy as a result of that. Let's go to the next pillar. The next thing is something more wordy and it's something called the chemical balance. Now, as we all know, our body produces hormones, chemicals, neurotransmitters that reflect in, your, in our emotional state, in our mental state, in our energy levels, how tired, how awake, how motivated we are. This is the chemical balance. If that's not in check, then you're gonna be feeling stressed, groggy, tired, fatigued, and angry. So we don't want that. Of course, we want to optimize it so that we feel energetic all day to the, the times that we need because we, we can't feel energetic at night, otherwise we cannot fall asleep. So how does that look like? First of all, we need to do the, the things we mentioned previously, which is optimize the skin rhythm, optimize the blood sugar. Those things are the biggest contributors to chemical balance because as we know if we have an optimal circadian rhythm that means that our body knows when to produce chemicals like adrenaline cortisol melatonin at the right times and those chemicals influence how we think and how we feel and how energetic we are so that's why blood sugar the same thing make if, if we have a dip a crazy dip because usually what happens when you spike your blood sugar with a carb heavy meal or a really protein heavy meal you spike your blood sugar, okay? Then your body starts producing insulin in order to regulate that sugar, bring it down. But just because your body gets confused after that, so you spike your blood sugar, then insulin follows in order, in order for your blood sugar to be absorbed by your cells. That's the function of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that helps your cells open up and suck that, in, that blood sugar because otherwise you'll die. So that's happening. Like blood sugar up, it's followed by insulin, then blood sugar goes quickly down, but insulin is for, it stays in your system for longer, which causes the normal baseline of blood sugar to get to drop down and down and down. So that's why you have a blood sugar drop afterwards. And this is why you feel moody, irritated, uh, like you feel lethargic, you're all half asleep. That affects your chemical balance. Now, those two things are the lowest, like the lowest hanging fruits in terms of chemical balance of your body. But then... We can use other mechanisms and tools to make sure we are, we are producing the right amounts of neurotransmitters, dopamine, uh, GABA, serotonin, oxytocin, endorphins, etc. So outdoor walks is a great way to lower the activity of a primal section in your brain that's called the amygdala that also controls when you're getting stressed and anxious for no reason. This is a, like a part of your brain that detects uh, like threats and makes you feel anxious. It's also part of your brain that if it's like on your daily life, even if it's there is no like lions or elephants chasing you or crocodiles chasing you, you, it puts you in the fight or flight mode, okay? So if that's activated for a long term, you, you're constantly stressed, anxious. So a really good way to lower the activity of the amygdala, the unnecessary activity of the amygdala is going for outdoor walks. The activity of your eyes whenever you're on an outdoor walk is like this because you see things passing by you. So you're looking like this, okay? Naturally, that's the movement of your eyes. That movement of your eyes lowers the activity of that primal part of your brain and therefore makes you more calm, makes you more resilient. Connecting with nature, things like grounding, even going for an outdoor walk, it's going to kill many birds with one stone. Is you're gonna be very your your brain is gonna produce a chemical cocktail after coming back. Your blood your blood flow to the brain is gonna be very much increased. Your oxygen flow to the brain is gonna be very much increased. You're gonna produce things like oxytocin, serotonin, things that I mentioned before. 
and this improves your chemical balance in the, in the body and brain. Grounding as well, it reduces inflammation, kills free radicals, etc. Optimal gut health. Now, I should have put in this in the top. In your gut, there are trillions of bacteria that, that reside there, which is called, which compose the gut microbiota. But also, along with those trillions of bacteria, there are neurons that are responsible for, for the production of neurochemicals like serotonin, dopamine, GABA. Okay, and those neurochemicals influence the way you think, your emotional state, your mental state, your focus, your energy, everything you can think of every, that, that translates, that shows itself into a feeling. So the best thing you can do for your, for your mental health is improve your gut. So eating more fermented foods, avoiding refined carbs and sugars, avoiding seed oils, avoiding ultra processed foods, avo like doing all the things here that help your blood sugar and digestion, making sure that you follow this consistent eating, optimal eating behaviors, uh, making sure to eat based on your circadian clock and not eat late at night because your digestive process is gonna be slower. All those things are gonna be contributing to optimal gut health and digestion. And optimal, as you now know, optimal digestion and gut health is gonna to contribute to a better brain. Your gut and your brain are directly connected with each other. Uh, and again, this comes down to your gut is producing neurochemicals that are in your brain, of course, right? So if they influence your stress levels, it, it is a, like a massive component of your energy levels as well. Okay, so stress levels damage the gut health, but also gut health, bad gut health produces stress, okay? One of the main reasons you have brain fog, you feel fatigued, your, your immune system is out of whack, is because your gut health, as a, as a matter of fact, most of the diseases you know, especially the inflammatory diseases, come from like poor gut health. Arthritis, asthma, eczema, things like that come from poor gut health. Getting bored. Why getting bored is crucial to chemical balance. Think about it. In our modern day society, every time we get bored, what do we do? Like I'm sitting here, I'm trying to do work, I'm trying to accomplish a task. I, I start wondering, what do I do? First thing I do, I pick up my phone, I check notifications, DM, Slack. I, I keep my mind occupied with things all day. I don't let my mind get bored. And as a result, my dopamine baseline influ like gets changes all day. I'm getting quick dopamine from my phone I go back to base. I go back to like my normal. I'm not. I'm not motivated because I was like just a minute ago. I was here watching TikTok videos, and dopamine is the main uh, is the main pred predicator to your motivation and like willing to pursue difficult things. Okay, testosterone and dopamine. But like, whenever you are indulging to high dopamine activities that are you're essentially pursuing. Um, pleasure, the thing that you're accomplishing is making your life much harder. Whenever you're pursuing things like video games, junk food, drugs, uh, porn, and things like that, you're making your life way harder than it should be. Whenever you're pursuing difficulties, training, accomplishing hard milestones, getting exposed to cold, getting exposed to sauna, climbing mountains, for example, hard things, the rewards that come after them are making are making you more motivated to do those things again because you get your dopamine from those sources and like getting your dopamine from improving yourself is going to improve your life okay so getting bored is very very crucial and embracing the boredom instead of keeping your mind occupied with easy dopamine all the time meditating is also great for your chemical balance because it trains this part of your brain that infl that this part of your brain, which is the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for um, translating the feelings, like the sensations of your body into feelings. So if you have struggle, if you, if you struggle with focusing on the task at hand, just like I mentioned in the, in the previous part, one thing that, it'll go that is going to help you improve your focus is meditation, mindfulness meditation. Eliminating distractions as well as a result of like, getting bored is going to influence your dopamine 
and it's going to allow you, it's going to limit you to only get your dopamine and pleasure from hard things, from boring things. Okay, Do boring things usually like delayed gratification is usually what's, what most people can't, um, can do, can accomplish. They're having challenges with. And therefore, that's the main reason people go, have the shiny object syndrome jumping from offer to offer from business model to business model. Okay, so whenever you're trying to accomplish work and want to have high energy levels, eliminating the distractions, locking yourself in a room, locking your phone in the other room or your like distraction of choice, for example, if you struggle with, like, if you get distracted from your phone all the time, if you get distracted from like opening new tabs, checking email, checking YouTube, you can use different tools for each. For example, if you have like a problem checking checking your email all the time on YouTube, you can use something like Freedom that'll block specific websites for like specific amount of time. It's gonna help you focus more, okay? If you have like issues, challenges, getting distracted from your phone all the time, not accomplishing work, what you can do is like you can lock your phone in another room or you can even get a vault. I had some of my clients uh, do that. Like he got a vault, an actual vault with passcode, keeping that in the other side of the room. So every time he wanted, he, he thought of getting the room, of getting the phone. It was like such a bore. It was such a hassle for him to get up, put the, like put the passcode on, and open the vault for for him to check the phone. It's like he he has a lot of resistance to do that. So eliminating distractions, you're essentially improving the use of your dopamine, and your dopamine is essentially the predicator of how much things you're getting done each day. So this is the my guideline for optimal energy levels for the day, preventing getting tired, losing focus, losing motivation for, for the rest of the day. So that you can better spend your time and better spend your energy accomplishing tasks in your business that are going to move the needle forward. If that help, or if you have tried any of these, if you're incorporating any of those tips here, make sure to let me know. And I would also love to hear how this is working out for you. What things you're incorporating and what things are you kind of like struggling to incorporate. Okay. And without further ado, leave a comment down below. Tell me which things out of the things that I mentioned you're incorporating right now. And let's chat in the next video. Peace.